Hey everybody, thank you for joining another uh, discussion at the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with uh, my co-host John. Hello, John. Hey, I am excited to be going. Me too, me too. So today's subject, um, we are going to be doing a review of KetoCon. So just uh, for those of you who do not know, KetoCon happened over Labor Day weekend in Austin, Texas. And John and I were both fortunate enough to um, to head down there and meet some really great people. And so we are super excited to, to share our experiences with you guys. Um, so... Yes, it's going to be a little bit different. Wait, where are you flipping slides? It's going to be a little bit different episode than normal. I mean, normally we pit, take a particular topic, but today we're going to talk about a couple of different items and share our experiences and some, and even some things that challenge the way we think individually. So, so why don't you just give us a basic overview of what KetoCon even is, if somebody has no clue? Okay, so um, this was the inaugural um, KetoCon. And um, so for those who have never been to a conference, um, there were vendors who were uh, selling items that were specific to uh, the ketogenic way of eating, um, as well as speakers who had, um, some of them were um, doctors, some of them worked in the medical field as researchers, and then others were just um, people who were either helping um, others with this way of eating or they um, had been doing uh, doing this themselves for a long time and so they shared their stories. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of how everything was set up, it was in a, in a big hall um, in the Palmer's um, Event Center in Austin, Texas. And in the front of the um, in the front of the build or the the room that we had, um, all of the vendors were set up, and then um, you walked all the way through the vendors, and then there was a stage set up with um, seating, and that's where all of the speakers uh, were up talking about it. So there was a lot of things going on. John and I actually meant to do some Facebook Live episodes and. Um, other things we had we had great we had great aspirations, but there were so many things going on, and um, everything was so active. Plus, John and I volunteered to help uh, while we were down there. So, unfortunately, we did not get to do as many of those things as we had anticipated. But we are here to tell you all about it and super excited about it. So it's almost as good. <laughs> um, so. The speakers, again, I kind of touched on it. So some of them were doctors, some were just giving their personal experiences. Um, but they did have 37 speakers that were um, at the conference this year. Three, um, they had three panel discussions. So there were groups of people who were who did an individual talk uh, that got together and then basically just answered questions from the audience. Although each of their individual, they also had a question and answer section um, in there as well. But so if somebody reads books, what were the big names like the, that they would recognize? So Jimmy Moore. Yeah, so Jimmy Moore. He's got Moore, quite a few books, and yep. he's a huge following. Um. For those who follow, like, the medical side of it, we had Dr. Will Cole. Uh, there was also Dr. Ann Childers. Um, Dr. Wilson was supposed to be there, but unfortunately could not get a flight in uh, due to the, the hurricane that impacted Houston just before the conference. So um, they had a guest speaker come in for him, and I apologize because I could not remember his name, and I could also not find that. <laughs> Um, but we also had uh, Dr. Lemansky, um, Dr. Lundell, uh, Dr. Sullivan was there. Uh, some of these names, again, you may not recognize, um, but, I mean, you may not recognize by name. I did not uh, in the medical field, but actually after they started talking, I did recognize some of the uh, things that they referenced. So, yeah, so the other people with big books would be Leanne Vogel. Rep. Brad Kearns from Prior Blueprints. Um, is there anybody else? The big names that have a huge bestseller. Uh, Dr. Eric Westman um, as well. He is uh, the new Atkins, uh, or he consults on the new Atkins. Um, and for those who know the Atkins and uh, followed that years ago, uh, Jacqueline Everstein was also there. 
and she was Dr. Atkins' uh, main uh, nurse. So while he was alive and, and doing his practice, she had a huge, uh, huge role in that um, as well. So uh, some of the other ones that people would know that that follow uh, is uh, Dr. Ben Bickman, and also we had um, Dave Feldman. So those were those are some of the the big name. Oh, Carrie Brown too. If anybody is into the cookbooks and stuff, she she has quite a few cookbooks. Um, uh, Maria Emmerich is also a, a really big name that was there. Um, sorry, guys, I'm trying to look through the list because there were so many of them that. Um, I think those are those are most of the. So before we get the into the first impressions. What were uh, what were some of the studies that some of the doctors that are doing that were highlighted? Uh, so one of them, um, there there was some talk around uh, the cancer in keto um, and some of the research that was done on that. Um, there was uh, Dr. Childers actually talked about um, keto with mental health and how um, changing your eating and some of those foods can actually improve many of the mental health issues um, that they see. Um, let's see, just kind of scanning here. Functional medicine, uh, Dr. Cole talked about how um, they use the ketogenic diet in conjunction with some other methods, but um, how, how they use eating in the functional medicine space. Um, Let's see. And hitting home for me, uh, there was one one uh, study that they're doing with Parkinson's disease, which I was really interested in because we've had some cases of that in my family. So I'm going to be definitely following up on that research. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple of people who talked about diabetes and um, keto, which, I mean, I think that we all know, but these two specifically were talking about uh, type 1 diabetics. Um, which anybody who's listened to us before knows that I try to steer clear of that because that gets into a space that I'm not personally comfortable with. Uh, but there, there were people out there uh, who did talk about that. Um, there was also fitness. Uh, that was that was one of the things. Um, cholesterol. Um, yeah, it, I mean it was it was a pretty big gamut of things that they were talking about as far as scientific. Again, some of them were personal experiences, but um, the majority of these people who were speaking did have scientific uh, research, at least to back what they brought to the conference. So, All right, so we spent 10 minutes name dropping and study yeah. dropping. So let's get to some more meat of what we learned or what was challenged for us. So from a first impression standpoint, what was your favorite speaker and what was the point of their speech? Um, so my favorite speaker, honestly, was Robert Sykes. Um, so who's Robert? Because that was a name I had never heard before. As well as myself, I had never heard of him before. Um, he actually was, you're probably going to have to help me with this, but he was the uh, winner of a, um, he does strongman. No, no, no. no. So he, he's a, uh, it's not figure, I guess I can't remember what it is. But it's the male bodybuilding. So it's not the strong lift. So a strong lift would be somebody who competes to lift the most. This would be the person who's in the in the physique. And so he would be the the trim guy on stage uh, who is, uh, and he got his pro card right away. And he was ketogenic. Yeah. So this is why you're the fitness guy and I'm not. That's okay. Because <laughs> um, I truly so, knew, did so, not know the difference. So why? Those. So why was that? Why was it uh, interesting for you? What what points did he pull out of there that that made you think? Yeah. So to be honest, I went into it having no idea who this guy was. Um, I almost did not sit through it. It was the first speaker of Saturday morning. So at eight o'clock, he got on stage, and I thought this is of no interest to me. I do not want to do bodybuilding. I don't know what any of this is. And I I literally was going to get up and leave. Um, last minute changed my mind, and I'm very pleased that I did. 
Um, first of all, he is one of the most knowledgeable people that I listen to, and I will apologize because I was not able to listen to all of them, just because, like I said, we did um, help with uh, volunteering and stuff. So I'm not saying that he was more knowledgeable than some of the doctors on there. However, from what from what resonated to me, he was very knowledgeable. Um, he did not go into it with um, a firm stance on one direction or another. He seemed very open-minded to um, experimenting with himself and also um, allowing others to experiment with themselves so that they could get that individualized um, protocol. Um, but I think it was more shocking to me, quite honest, because I... I had never heard of him, wasn't really planning on listening to him, didn't have any desire to listen to him. And when he got up there and started speaking um, about himself starting out at 17 years old, um, how he worked through the typical way of bodybuilding and the way they eat, um, and then finding ketogenic and moving towards that and actually being, um, you know, having more uh, stamina than those who were training next to him. Uh, it, it was actually just very fascinating to me. Yeah, one of the key points of his uh, his uh, talk that was a good takeaway is the fact that in the bodybuilding community, I mean, that's, I see, I did it. In the in the in the uh, when you're doing competitions like that, there it's not very healthy on your body. You you gain weight really fast and then you take it off. And, and what he was talking about is with the weight he was eating, he was able to control. So his his highs were not as high as, and his lows were not as low. So he had a very slow muscle build, um, a lot slower than he used to. But he also had a very slow fat uh, fat release, which made him a much more healthier in, in the long run. So it yep. was it was uh, pretty impressive. Yep. Uh, and he and he kind of had charts and you know talked to stuff. So it was great uh, sh to share his experience with that. Yeah. So who who was your favorite well, speaker? Well, I had to cop out because I said it was the fitness panel. There was about five different people, and it was really good to kind of hear everybody's kind of small experiences. I know a lot of times when we answer questions um, in these sessions, we say it depends, but it was kind of uh, interesting. There were multiple people, and uh, Brad Kearns is the Primal Blueprint guy. We had uh, you know the same. Bobby, you just mentioned, he was on the panel also, and it ranged everywhere to uh, all the way up to uh, Brian uh, Williamson that has a his own podcast also. But the reason I, I really like that is because it kind of proved that it wasn't the same for everybody. Everybody has different experiences, and they talked about everything from uh, carb backloading or, or carb refeeding, depending on what you want to call it, where um, somebody was working out super heavy. Uh, the example revolving around that was multiple days of CrossFit in a week. And they said basically carb refeeding was probably important for that, depending on you know how it makes you feel. But then they also said, you know, you shouldn't be killing yourself like that. You should back off. So it was very interesting. Everybody had a solid opinion and a little bit of different stance, but the overarching message that you could you that I took away personally was that you need to make some small tweaks and find out what works for you because uh, somebody like uh, Bobby did no carb refeeding whatsoever, but he's not in a sport where he is doing long endurance like the Brad Kearns, who was pretty solid on uh, you know if you are bonking in in a long distance sport and his is uh, triathlons uh, that you you might be refeeding with carbs um, while you're while you are uh, actually in the event so it was a uh, it's kind of nice to see everybody's different opinions on that so a little bit of a sleeper and uh, on the Brad Kearns topic uh, his was his topic was on getting over yourself, and it was uh, pretty interesting, not necessarily related to keto at all. He said, hey, everybody, everybody's got challenges in their life. Get over it and try to improve, which was a fantastic message also, which carried through uh, to the uh, panel discussion. Yeah. Everybody's got problems. Everyone's dealing with something. Get over yourself and try to figure out how you can move yourself forward.
Yeah, I honestly I can't wait to get my downloads um, from the conference so that I am able to go back and and watch all of those again and then see the ones that I um, unfortunately missed. So, um, so we had talked about John um, some of the views that we had going into this. Um, and then, based on the pr presentations that we had, uh, that we were able to see, how that changed some of our views. Um, so you want to start with what you went into this, one of those views, and then. Well, everybody knows I'm not as strict keto as you. We <laughs> have, yep. I mean, just listen to any of the back catalog, and you'll hear that. Um, one of the things that I have always had, kind of in my head, no matter what, is the vegetable intake. Uh, tons of people growing up, my, my parents, how I was raised, uh, everything. Uh, you know, the vitamins and minerals that you get from vegetables, uh, you know, you can argue the whole net carbs versus total carbs thing, but everybody knows I have always tended to stay uh, more in the 50 to 100 carbs, depending on my activity level, which there was definitely people there that would say that I was not ketogenic. Um, so that, that's the mindset I've, I've always had because I, I do I do consider vegetables to be extremely important. But there was a couple of different conversations or speakers that talked about the fact that uh, everything from the the uh, not Food and Drug Administration, but whoever kind of lays out the vitamins and minerals in things, just blanketly said there is there is no vitamins and minerals in in meat. And I'm over exaggerating that point a little bit, but uh, they were showing the studies of, for example, uh, one of the ones that sticks out in my head was vitamin C. Um, I would have never thought that vitamin C was in red meat at all because it always says zero on everything. But eating red meat will keep you from getting scurvy. So things like that, um, I had no idea from a challenging perspective. And uh, with that, uh, my assumption on how much fat I have in my diet because my vegetable intake is turned up, I've never really probably gone into the some of the high fat realms that some of these bodybuilders and pro athletes were doing. So it just made me realize that there are things that I have not experimented on myself with and that uh, you know I needed to uh, kind of challenge some of my own assumptions because uh, you know we tend to think we have all the facts and data on what we know. And then those things I'm like, really? There's vitamin C in meat? I had no idea. So some, some things I need to look at. How about yourself? Anything that you were... So, mine wasn't really an aha moment, to be honest. Um, mine, mine was more... Um, I, I have listened to most of, um, most of these people that were here. I've either seen them on um, other uh, televised pieces of different conferences um, or listened to podcasts or followed them on social media. So, I, I wasn't at a point where I you know, had that sort of thing, that um, information. But to be honest, and, and I debated on whether to point this out because this makes me sound kind of bad, but um, the reality of it is is that I went into it with the thought that some of the um, people might not be as nice um, or as friendly. Um, so going into it, there was a couple of, of guys that are pretty big into this KetoCon itself, um, and I actually told them this, um, but I was anticipating, um, to be honest, Danny Vega to be not a very nice person. And, and when I was talking to him, he said, oh, you thought I was just going to be this muscle bound idiot, which I never thought, like, I always knew that he was intelligent. He's got a master's degree and whatever, like, but in my mind, and it's making me kind of go back and view myself, to be honest, but in my mind, when I see a guy with that kind of physique, um, I don't know why, but I just assumed that he was going to be pretty full of himself um, and not really, not be really very, very friendly. And to be honest, 
Um, Got to throw this out and, and give Danny a plug. He is probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my entire life. Um, him and him and Robert Sykes both. And again, I knew nothing about Robert going into this, so I didn't really have any opinion of him. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised that Danny um, and his wife both were as friendly and outgoing and super genuinely nice people as they were. Um, so I guess that's probably reflecting some of my personal flaws. Um, but that really, and, and I think for me, um, again, because I have been very strict keto, I've been in this community for a long time, um, that to me was the most touching personal thing um, that I could have taken from this conference. So, yeah. so we've talked a little bit in, uh, I guess, maybe super detail of a couple of things, but uh, based on all of that, all of the different speakers and stuff, if you were going to give a couple of different people who are listening to this for the first time, they're not sure what person to maybe research next, can you give me, can, if, if somebody's brand new to to keto, of all those speakers, which one had the best message that we could tell somebody to go out and look at, look for? Um, I, for me... Because it wouldn't be Danny. Right. Right. Because nope. Danny's pretty extreme, so if we give a couple of maybe level sets of, of where you are, Danny would be somebody who's in advanced. You yes. want to look at your advanced. Yes. If, if I'm a beginner, who, who would you recommend? Um, to be honest, I probably would have to go to my fail safe, and that's Jimmy Moore. Um, the, the way that he writes things is very easy for people to understand. Um, although he works with doctors to get the correct information, he does not write it in medical terminology so that it's easy for, um, anybody to understand. Um, so I would say his book, um, Keto Clarity would probably be, um, an extremely easy one. If it is um, podcasting that you want to listen to, quite honestly, I, I would go to, to Brian Williamson. Um, he has a lot of guests on his show. Um, I can't remember how many he has in the hundreds now. Um, but there's something for everybody. So if there's a specific illness that you're looking at, if it's the overall diet itself. And what's his website? Um, so Brian has the ketoevangelist.com. Um so you could find that. We can stick that in our show notes as well. We can sure. link out to that. Um, and if you want something a little bit more scientific, um, like I kind of geek out on stuff, two of them uh, that I really found very interesting, uh, David, uh, sorry, Dave Feldman, um, he's somebody that I've been following for a long time. But scientific-wise, the one that uh, we saw... Um, his name is escaping me. Hold on just a second. I'm trying to find that. Um, you and I both watched him, and he was the one who did the, um, the, uh... But while you're looking that up, yeah. I'll put in a plug for, uh, Brad Kearns and the Primal Blueprint. If you're not as sold or you want to have a stepping stone to, to keto and you're not, not sure yet, um, his programs, uh, the Primal Blueprint stuff, uh, you know, has a, has a wide gamut of of information on just cut, how you can cut out even just the processed stuff, go with whole foods, and, and uh, you know, get part of the way there, which I think is a easier transition to to keto, also. Yeah, it was Doctor Lundell. Dr. Sorry, Dr. yeah, Lundell. he's very scientific. So if that's the sort of thing that you geek out on, um, like I do, then. His presentation was very, very good, but not easy for everybody. So. Perfect. All right. So do you want to uh, kind of change gears? In, anything else on the speaker side or any other takeaways or key points? Um, yeah. I mean, again, they were very informative, and everybody kind of went in a different direction. Um, so it really depends on what you're – what your interest is, if it's health-wise, there were many of them there that had different um, different topics to look at. Um, but overall, I mean, I was pretty impressed. I, I don't know about you, but I for the first year, um, sometimes they can be a little clunky, but this one seemed to run very smooth. 
um, and I felt like it was very successful. There's a lot of conversation revolving around exogenous ketones, and that's something that yes. we talked about a little bit, um, which I think leads us really well into the vendor yep. side. So from uh, exogenous ketones, why don't you uh, kind of tell me what you, what you think they are and kind of maybe a little bit more about the mixed mixed uh, information that because the, the speakers were all over the place on exogenous ketones, but yet the vendors had a ton of them. Yeah. So we've, we've talked about this a little bit before. Um, although I am pretty open-minded with most things um, as far as being introduced, I'm, I, don't, I try to not form an opinion of something that I don't have a lot of knowledge of. Um, and exogenous ketones is no exception, right? So I'm very reserved with them and I'm very, um, very leery to give an opinion one way or the other. However, um, my current stance on them is that there is a place for them um, medically. I do believe that if you have Alzheimer's, cancer, uh, something like that, that I do believe that they can be beneficial. My reservation with them is what your body does with them because as you're going into ketosis and, and going through the whole process, your natural, the natural progression is that your body creates the ketones and then other things happen because of that. So my concern is, is that if we are adding to that, what, how does that impact the actual natural progression? So that's where my reservation is. I have not done a lot um, of study on it. I did take them. Uh, John brought me some last week or the week before. Um, I didn't die. <laughs> um, there was, I mean, nothing bad happened. I felt different for sure. I had a lot more energy. Um, at one point I took, throughout the whole process, I was taking my ketones um, numerous times a day. At the highest point, my ketones got to 3.6. And to be honest, I did not like the way that I feel um, or that I felt during that. Um, so from a relative perspective, that is basically the height around where I was when I was complete, completely fasted. Yeah. So, and anybody who knows me personally knows I am not really comfortable when I have, um, when I don't have con total control over myself. Um, I don't really enjoy being drunk um, or anything like that. So. I, and I would not equate it to feeling drunk, but it was a feeling that I had never felt before, so it was very odd to me. Um, I can't say that I would never do it again, um, but it wasn't a feeling that I liked so much that I wanted to do it every day. Um, so walk me through exogenous ketones, uh, is, is, if I don't know what that is, can you give me kind of the levels? So it starts with fat you eat. Right. And then the next step would be MTC, whether that be powder or liquid. Yep. So MTC is one that your body would process into ketones faster. So it's maybe a way of jump-starting, uh, right. for lack of a better term, the keto. Yeah, so with fat and with MCT, um, if you are not in ketosis, fat is probably not going to give you ketones, right? So, I mean, there are... To put into perspective, somebody who eats a normal, standard American diet, if they eat, um, I don't know, an avocado or, uh, you know, bacon, it, they're not going to produce ketones because of that. But if you are in a ketogenic state, those things would help you um, produce some ketones. Uh, MCT... That one may or may not add on, on a regular we, diet. We've talked you. about that before. Yep. It gives you the C8, C6, and all that right. stuff. So with the exogenous ketones, though, they actually do. So even someone who eats a standard American diet, if they take exogenous ketones, they're going to have ketones in their system. Now, the level is probably going to be different than somebody who's already in ketosis and producing their own as well. Um, but... <laughs> Again, I, yeah, I, I really don't have a hard stance on them. Uh, I, I don't know. They scare me, to be quite honest, um, from somebody who came out of the gimmick world um, trying to find the next gimmick to make me lose weight. And um, so that's where my fear with that is, is that somebody may hear about 
you know, these exogenous ketones giving you or putting you into ketosis and getting you back into ketosis faster, giving you higher ketones that they may think, you know, I can go eat pizza and then just take this and all is good in life. And Which is a little bit of the marketing, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, so, the, and that, that brings us into what we were, our, our next, we wanted to do a review of our vendors. So, um, help me out. Keto Sport, was that the couple or the, the group from Champagne? Uh, ke- uh, no, Keto no. Athletes. Keto Athletes, okay. So, so that one? They were the first people who come out with uh, exogenous ketones. And, and that was like five or six years ago. They've, yeah. they've been out there for a long time. So those, Very stable. that company impressed me a lot. Um, I didn't feel like their marketing campaign was anybody can take our stuff and, you know, you can do whatever you want and still have ketones. Um, so I was pretty impressed with that. And, and I'm not going to say that the rest of them did do that. Um, but they specifically called that out to me, um, that they, you know, that is not where they, they are looking to help, um, enhance athletes with these ketones. Um, so their marketing angle of this is not to just be, you know, go do what you want and you can still produce ketones. So I was pretty impressed with them. Um, as far as the ketones... And they're based out of champagne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which which I was pretty um, pretty surprised about, honestly, when we found that out, so... So I guess the one of the guys is from U of I. Yeah. One of the doc, uh, whatever, PhD folks is from U of I. They were also... They, but they are no exception to getting into the... Uh, supplement piece because they they the products that they've added is way over exogenous ketones. Now they've got uh, somewhat pre workout types and uh, recovery types of products. So a lot of uh, I would say what I would call the bodybuilding bro science marketing product stuff is now that's how we know keto is becoming popular. Yeah. Now that they have a. Uh, a lot of meal replacement slash get your fuel in after you work out products. So there was multiple multiple boosts with meal replacements and or um, recovery products revolving around that. Yeah, I didn't count how many do you. No, there's. At I least would say there was five. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So there was there was quite a few of those. Um, so just to kind of give like a quick rundown, I'm not going to read through all of them, but Dry Farm Wines was there. Um, we had uh, Keto & Co., Keto Delivered, uh, F-Bomb, there was Primal, or uh, sorry, Peely Hunters were there, Primal Kitchen was there. Um, so again, extremely friendly people. Um, I did not have a chance to go to every booth. Um, which I was a little bit sad about, um, but there were a few for me that really stood out. So I'm going to start with you. Um, what were the, were there any of them, first of all, that, that stood out to you as kind of superstars? <laughs> well, it's funny. I, I guess that's too prong for me. I really liked the Keto Cookie guys uh, as a business, uh, two young guys, really go-getters, fantastic to talk with but they had products that I would never use. It, um, not that there isn't a place for it, but like in where I'm at, I have no need for a keto cookie. It's just, I just don't do cookies. I have no craving for a cookie, but I can see how if I was you know, trying to, uh, a kid's event or something like that, where I would, I would want their products just to give options to, to my family. You know, my kids and my family. Yeah. So they were very impressive. Uh, in the same lines, the uh, F-bomb, the fat bomb guys, they make nut, nut butters uh, in these really concealable, kind of easy to share kind of pouches that I could totally see given my kids. But, I mean, I liked it, but I had no, like, it's, it didn't, I, I don't have those hankerings anymore, for lack of a better term. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. Um, again, absolutely adored the cookie people. We posted out on our website, and I actually think maybe I call them my new BFFs. 
super cute kids, great to talk to, very good business sense. Um, but anybody who's ever listened knows that I'm not a sweet eater. So, like, again, they were good, and I did try all the flavors they had um, available. Um, I will tell you, just to put a plug in for them, the peanut butter cookies, if you are keto and you miss that, uh, they did taste as much like the old peanut butter cookies as they so, could. So but, snickerdoodles. They reminded me of yeah. my grandma's yeah. snickerdoodles. But, um, but again, that's not something that I would do personally. So, um, And I took a pack home for my husband, and I can tell you that I probably cannot purchase them because my husband is a sweet freak. Um, and he liked them way too much. So that isn't something that we could have in our house, dangerous. to be honest. Yeah, it would be very dangerous for him. Um, F-bombs, I kind of had the same feeling. Great guy. Uh, great business sense. Um, I, I probably would use those um, more frequently than the cookie. Yeah, it reminded me of uh, almond butter in a... a yeah, I don't know if you guys have kids. I do, but uh, the uh, app, that little apple pouches, yeah. where you could just the squeezable stuff. Yep. A lot of those products, it was basically a good way to have an emergency meal in your pocket. So I could totally see yeah. throwing that in my bag is something that I would use um, at, uh, if I was going to go on a super long hike. Yep. So I get the strategically, there was a few products that I would do like that. Yeah, and I and I feel that as well. Like I think that that would be a good thing to have as you know a backup. Um, but I don't think the shelf life is very long, so, so you have to probably not something. I mean, unless you know you've got an event coming up, um, like you're going to hike the Grand Canyon or yeah. Lost. <laughs> So, it's probably not happening for me. Well, it will for me because <laughs> I'm. I saw, uh, I've, it's on my list of things to do soon. I, it's been a, uh, almost ten years since I did last. So oh, anyway, wow. that's so so uh, random for uh, off the. So for somebody who's sitting in an office, uh, what products would we recommend to somebody who's maybe here they didn't go? What 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 would we tell somebody to go look at? Uh, quite honestly, one for me that I am going to check into is the Sogo snacks. Um, this gentleman was from Iowa, and he makes beef sticks. There are several different flavors. I don't remember jalapeno, original, um, mm -hmm. Tex-Mex. Um, but they've got a pretty good shelf life. They are something that's easily stored. Um, you could throw them in your purse and take them with you. Um, so for me and my lifestyle, that would probably be um, something that I could see me purchasing and keeping as that emergency um, emergency piece. Uh, yeah, I went into it thinking the Dry Farm Wines was going to be my highlight. <laughs> um, it's still alcohol. I know, it's still alcohol. And to be honest, I really, um, I really thought that I missed that. Um, but I had the opportunity to have some of the wine, um, and I just, I, I didn't. Uh, you found out you didn't miss it? Like yeah. me in the, in the Chicago Deep Dish Pizza? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but except I didn't even try it. So when I was offered it, like, I had that instant thought of, oh, my gosh, yes, I want a glass of wine. And then it hit me, no, I really don't. Um, so I didn't even taste it. But it could be a good option for somebody. It, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and there, there is a list of things, and I, I talk to them pretty extensively. Uh, there's a list of, of criteria that all of these makers have to meet. Um, and so none of them are from the U.S. Uh, apparently no manufacturer in the U.S. meets the criteria that they have. So you're getting them from France and Germany, and I can't remember what all the countries. Um but yeah, um, but the other one that really sticks out in my mind is the Peely Nuts. Yeah, Peely Nuts. Um, I, I have been wanting to try them. Um, not a huge nut fan, um, but I did try those. And I have to be honest, they not only were they delicious, but the guy who has this company, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a solid guy. So that would be the one for me that I would recommend um, if people you know, want something with the extra fat um, or to, you know, just to add to their ketogenic diet, the peeling nuts definitely would be my my go-to suggestion. So Yeah, we're a little over time, but I, I would be, you know, I wouldn't be myself had I not said that the Primal Kitchen 
spread there was fantastic. They had all of their dressings available. Warning, some of their products do have honey in there. So where you, wherever you are in your ketogenic journey, uh, you know, some of those are not intended probably. Some of the bars especially. Um, although the other macronutrient ratios are pretty decent, um, some of them are, you know, do have uh, natural honey in them. So, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely thought there was enough meal replacements that I may, I mean, I'm going to strike myself down by saying this, but I may find, uh, I, I got a couple of samples, I may find that I find a, uh, a equivalent to a protein shake that I might start using again if it fits um, to have that emergency, like you mentioned, the emergency. Uh, I, I do miss the pro- protein powder in my bag for uh, when I can't find something, and I, I may get some stuff like that, those single servings that I can put in my suitcase for when I'm somewhere, so I'm not just relying on my uh, my fish. Yeah. Yeah, Primal Kitchen, actually, I will um, throw something in there. Their mayonnaise, I did taste it. It does not have any honey in it. Um, they had one mayonnaise chipotle uh, that was really good, mm-hmm. um, and also their avocado oil. Um, I didn't see any of the bars or um, all their bars have at least five net carbs. Yeah, and their salad dressings I think had something in it that I personally wouldn't, um, but I can't remember off the top of my it's head. The honey one had the honey mustard has honey in it. Yeah, but the uh, other ones I think. The, we didn't look through all of them, but yeah, I, I, I do almost all the dressings except for the honey. Yeah, so it was great though. Uh, we really wish all of you guys could have made it because it really was a great time. Um, let's, let's be honest, no one's as crazy as us to direct to go all the way down to Austin to hear about fitness. Yeah, so you and have to live through our summaries. I have already purchased my tickets for next year. So. I'm not that crazy. Yeah. All right, we already ran over, so I don't think we really have time for questions. So, uh, next meeting, we are doing uh, the feedback from the expo was that it would be really good if we kind of did a more concentrated what's the difference between low carb and keto? What's primal versus paleo? What makes them different? So, we're going to try to make sound bites around all those so we can so you're a little bit more educated on what the difference is between those and i didn't stick it on there because uh frankly i forgot uh the uh next activate event is a is a next tuesday um it's over it's a lunch and learn also and it's time blocking and gating which is i think a pretty interesting concept so um we will i'll make sure that we send that out on the Yammer site. Yeah, and just something that I noticed, I put the wrong date on there. It's KetoCon 2018 that will be in August uh, 24th through 26th of 2018. Man, you're really pushing for somebody to come uh, with you, huh? So. All right. Well, thanks for joining, and uh, stay tuned for more exciting and fun stuff. If you have any topics, always our social medias. You're the, you're the social person, not me. Yeah. Yeah, so you can reach us uh, at our website, through Facebook. Uh, we also are on Pinterest and Twitter and Instagram. So keep telling you in corner or wherever the socials That's are. Right. All right, great. Thanks, guys.